Lord who dwells in my heart and upon my lips, and who can cleanse the lips of the prophet Isaiah with the burning coal, grant for thy gracious mercy to bless me by the indwellingness of your Holy Spirit, and strengthen me as I now proclaim your holy gospel. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us listen to the holy gospel according to St. Luke, beginning with chapter 24, verse 35. Then the two told what had happened on the way, and how Jesus was recognized by them when he broke the bread. While they were still talking about this, Jesus himself stood among them and said to them, Peace be with you. They were startled and frightened, thinking they saw a ghost. He said to them, Why are you troubled, and why do doubts rise in your minds? Look at my hands and my feet. It is I, myself. Touch me and see. A ghost does not have flesh and bones, as you see I have. When he had said this, he showed them his hands and feet. And while they still did not believe it because of joy and again, amazement, he asked them, Do you have anything here to eat? They gave him a piece of broiled fish, and he took it and ate it in their presence. He said to them, This is what I told you while I was still with you. Everything must be fulfilled that is written about me in the law of Moses, the prophets, and the Psalms. Then he opened their minds so that they could understand the scriptures. He told them, This is what is written, that Christ will suffer and rise from the dead on the third day, and repentance and forgiveness of sins will be preached in his name to all nations, beginning at Jerusalem. You are witnesses of these things. Here ends the Holy Gospel, the Holy Gospel of our Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. You may be seated. What a pleasure it is to be back and see uh, the shining faces of God's treasure out here. You are God's treasure. It's a good uh, good to be back and good to get all caught up in my sleep from the, uh, the train ride uh, on the Amtrak. Amtrak is no friend to old people. Uh, and I'm getting older and, and my bones ache and different parts of me uh, were very numb at the end of the day. But that aside, it's so good to be back, and it's so good to see your smiling faces out there. We look today at uh, the first Sunday of the third week of Easter. You see, Easter is a season, and the season that we are in is uh, also corresponding to uh, what the Jewish holiday is of uh, uh, Shabbat uh, Halmer which is the counting of the Omer, or the counting of the days, and that time period between uh, the feast of first fruits, which was Resurrection Day, our Easter, and the time when Pentecost, or the feast of Shavuot, or Pentecost, uh, comes, which is 50, on the 15th day. Pentecost, the 50th day. And so all of this time in between, is the counting of that time period, which is Easter season for us. It's the time where we celebrate especially the resurrection of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, the Messiah of Israel, the coming King of Israel, the coming King of glory. We see so much turmoil in the world today, but we have an optimistic, blessed hope of the glorious coming of our great God and Savior, Jesus Christ. It's a great and glorious thing that we look forward to. But yet, he's here with us right now. Remember uh, reading uh, uh, a passage or a pamphlet by uh, a great saint of the name of St. Leonard, uh, St. Leonard of Fort Maurice. He lived in about the 17th century. And he wrote in about 1690 uh, a wonderful pamphlet that was called The Treasure in Our Midst, or The Treasure.
treasure that is amongst us. The Word of God says we have this treasure in earthen vessels that the transcendent power may be seen, if not of ourselves, but of Him. He is the treasure that we have. And in our midst today, in us, we have this treasure, which is Jesus Christ in earthen vessels. We have this treasure in our midst, our Lord Jesus Christ. We dwell in Christ, who is our treasure. Christ, our treasure, is in us, the hope of glory, whom we preach, warning every man and teaching every man that we may present everyone perfect in Christ Jesus. You see, without Christ, we are nothing. Just like he said to his disciples in the 15th chapter of John, without me, you are nothing. He is the vine, we are the branches. He is the essence of who we preach, who we proclaim. If we are not preaching Jesus, we're not preaching anything worth preaching. If we are preaching our Lord Jesus Christ, we are preaching the gospel of the mercy and the love of God. And what better day to be preaching it than on the 15th day of the County of the Omer, which is the first Sunday of the third week of Easter. So here we are proclaiming Him who is our treasure. If you recall in the in the passage that we look to today, we have, it just followed the, the time when uh, Cleopas and Mary of Cleopas, probably his wife, or some other companion, were going to their house uh, in Emmaus, which was out of Jerusalem, about a Sabbath day's travel. And they were walking on Easter morning they had heard the stories, and they were going, uh, traveling uh, to Emmaus, and they ran upon Jesus. They didn't know it was Jesus, and as you recall, he went to their house, and he actually spoke to them uh, the word of God. He talked them out of the Old Testament, the law, the prophets, and the Psalms in the writings of the Old Testament, which was essentially the entire Old Testament. And he taught them the things concerning himself. And they were mesmerized by this, uh, by this man whom they did not know was Jesus. And they, they were overwhelmed by what he was saying, and their hearts burned within them as, as he taught them concerning himself. You see, the treasure was speaking to him and her about this treasure that we have here and this treasure that we have in the Blessed Sacrament. You see, Jesus never leaves us nor forsakes us. And as he broke the bread with them there at that table, in their house, after he had given thanks, he broke the bread and they disappeared out of their sight. But the bread was left after he blessed it. The treasure is with us. And we partake of this treasure in our earthen vessels, that the transcendent power might be from God and not of ourselves. Isn't that wonderful? Well, the passage today begins at, at verse 35. Then the two, that is Cleopas and Mary of Cleopas, verse 35 of chapter 24 of the of Luke's gospel. The two of them told what had happened on the way and how Jesus was recognized by them when he broke the bread. I hope when we break the bread today, when we break this bread at this altar today, and Christ is present with us, even as he's present with us now in this room, in each one of us, this treasure in our earthen vessels, 
As we break the bread today, may we recognize that we are receiving Jesus in our midst. We are receiving Christ in you, who is our hope of glory when we preach. The Lord Jesus is recognized with them when he broke the bread. Now notice what happens. Jesus was invisible at this point, and now, while they were still talking about this, Jesus himself stood amongst them and said, Peace be with you. He disappeared at their house. The two came back. Where two or more are gathered together in my name, there am I in the midst of them. The two came back and came to the eleven in the upper room. Actually, there were probably more than that. Mary was there, maybe even 120, as many as that. Because the same 120 gathered on the day of Pentecost. Very probably. So, there they were, and suddenly Jesus was in their midst and said, Peace be with you. Now notice that Jesus is never absent, but yet he's manifested to them right on the spot, just as they had as two witnesses talked to the disciples about the wonderful words of what Jesus said to them on the way to a man. I think that's wonderful. I think that tells us so much about the presence of Christ with us. Now to me this is becoming more and more important. As I get older, things go wrong with me, my physical body. As I work hard, I get out of breath. As I find out more about what I was exposed to in the Republic of Vietnam during the war, I find out I was exposed to things that are giving me the problems that I have today. But that doesn't matter. Because what it means for me, and what it should mean really for you, is that we're drawing closer and closer to that time when we will see Jesus, the author and perfecter of our faith, face to face. We shall see him and we shall behold him and we will be transformed to be like him, for we shall see him as he is, and we shall know as we are known. Right now we live, and we look through a glass very darkly, but then we shall see him face to face, because we shall know him, who is our resurrection and life. And we shall be like him, because we shall see him as he is. It goes well with the, the statement this morning that Mother Gina read of becoming lovers of God because God so loved us. We ought to also love Him without reservation and to love one another even as He gave us commandment. You see, the law, the prophets, and the Psalms, those don't just speak of the suggestions of God. The law, the prophets, and the Psalms, they talk to us about God's love for us and how we should not break the commandments, but that we should be broken on the commandment and broken upon the presence of Christ broken before him, knowing that we have been broken on the law because we've all sinned and fallen short of the glory of God, we should be broken before God and allow God to put us back together again. We have this treasure in cracked pots to show us that the transcendent power is from God and not of ourselves. You see, you cannot save yourself, I cannot save myself, Nothing that I do is worthy enough for God. But God sending in His own Son in the likeness of sinful flesh became sin for us. Broken on the table of the law. Our sacrifice, our Paschal Lamb, our Passover. And now we celebrate the Easter resurrection morning 
15 days into it now. And recognize that it's all of God. And that Jesus Christ has got the victory. And so we carry the lamb that was slain around our shoulder. Loving him and adoring him. And he is seated at the right hand of the Father in the heavens. And someday he'll come again in glory. But we work and we live now in the presence of him who is the Lamb of God who takes away the sins of the world. He is the Lamb of God that's seated at the right hand of the Father. And we are already there with him mystically in the body of Christ. Christ in us, the hope of glory. But now we see through a glass darkly. But he's already present with us. 